Okay, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our valves. I need to be turning my engine in direction of normal rotation, which is counterclockwise from the rear, and that would be clockwise from the front. So I'm gonna make sure we can, so that's backwards, that's counterclockwise. So I wanna go clockwise this way. And what I gotta do is go off of mated cylinders on this engine. Okay, I'm looking at my service manual at my tune-up procedures. It depends on my model number uh, of the engine of which I use. This one's 78.2, I believe. I'll go look in a minute. There's a special pick for it. Um, I cannot find mine today, so we're going to do it the other way because not everybody has those tools. But there's the chart for that. And here we can see our exhaust valve clearance of 20 thousandths. On U models, on H models, it's 26 thousandths. The intake is 8 thousandths. The intake is typically always smaller than the exhaust. They give you a tolerance over here. You want to shoot for this, though. You don't want to, that's, that's a lot to be off. That will make the thing run not very good and that type of thing. We come over here, and here's our chart that we're going to use. So like I said a minute ago, we're going to do it off valve overlap. So basically when number six is on valve overlap, we're going to set the valves on one and the injector height on five. When two's on overlap, we're going to set them on five and three. When four is on overlap, we're going to set valves on three and injector height on six. When one is on overlap, we're going to set valves on six, injector height on two. When valve overlap on five, we're going to set valves on two and injector height on four and with the cylinder on valve overlap number three we're going to set the valves on four and the injector height on one okay i'm looking at the tag on the valve cover of my 60 series engine uh, this tells me it's a 400 horsepower engine set to run at 1800 rpm uh, the injector setting is 78.2 the valve lash is 0.508 which is 20 thousandths and the intake is 0.203 millimeters which is 8 thousandths gives us our max rpm which is 1925 um, standard cam ground here is our serial number and that's the number you would give them if you're calling for parts and this is the engine model number it's a 607 6067 gu40 that's a 12.7 liter 400 horse the GU40 is where I would look in my service manual injector heights to use. Okay, we're going to go ahead and find number six valve overlap according to our chart. That is where top dead center where we lined all our marks up. We should have already been there, but I'll show you how to find it. See how I can roll this, but I can't roll this one. So I'm going to turn it. Okay, the intake is so I need to go backwards. What we're looking for is where those valves rock. So I gotta go past it. My exhaust valve starts opening. I must have turned it quite a bit when we messed with the other stuff there. Okay, there you can see the exhaust valve. Is opening and the intake valve is closing. Okay, so now oh, we're gonna go a little bit further. Yeah. It's kind of hard to turn over because the injectors are in the holes. And now see that one's loose and this one's tight. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it in the direction of rotation and when I can't turn this wheel anymore that's valve overlap for number six see the exhaust valve opening just opened 
and the intake valve is just closed. So I'm going to back up just to verify. There I can turn it. This one's tight. I can't move that. You can kind of see the lobe coming up on it on the camshaft here. Okay, that's valve overlap right there. So now we can set our valves on it. Okay, this is number one exhaust. This is number one intake. You can see it moving a little bit there. Okay, I'm going to use what we call a go no go fuel gauge. A couple different styles of those. Um, if you can see this, there's a step here. This is eight thousandths out here. Back here's ten. So when you shove it in there, it'll stop. Here's a twenty. Um, so it's twenty out here and twenty-two back here. These are really handy. Uh, you can also get them in a straight gauge like that, or like that. For the back ones, I'm going to use the straight ones because it's a little easier to get into. But I'm going to do my exhaust valves first. So I'm going to go in between my valve and my rotator, and I can't get into it. That one is just right. There's a feel to this. It's more important to have them all the same than it is to be exact. So what I'm saying is if you had all of them set at 21 and 7 thousandths, that would be better than having one at eight and the next one at seven and the next one at six um, you know because there can be a field difference doing that okay I'm gonna use a combination wrench to open this up or to loosen this okay now I want to make sure I'm torquing that when I go back down that's where I'm gonna use a torque adapter like this um, I want to make sure it's straight out from to the side because if I'm here I'm gonna over torque if I'm here, I'm going to under torque because I'm changing the length of my torque wrench. So I want to be right there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my feeler gauge in here. Bring it down until it just, you'll feel it just stop. And this is where the feel part comes in. Okay, then I'm going to hold this and it shouldn't turn on me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't make a difference. And those feel pretty even, so we're gonna go with that. You can get pretty picky with these if you want. And then I'm gonna come in here. And that one feels pretty good. That one does not, so we're gonna adjust that one okay. and this is going to be our 8000 setting like I said this one's a little easier to get in there and back this nut off bring it down till it just touches just stops and I'm going to go ahead and torque that. Now this one works a little bit better if I use a different torque piece. So this is basically a line wrench, crow's foot, and the same thing with it. It needs to be at 90 degrees to not change our torque. We'll watch that and see if it turns. It doesn't look like it did. Ooh, and that's way too loose. I'm going to redo it. So you kind of got to feel your way through this to get the feel you like. And these torque to 30 foot pounds. That's what I set my wrench to. That's what the book called for. So you what you want is a slight drag here which is what I have. Now, if there's oil on it or something along those, you might have to move side to side, something like that, that can affect your feel. So that one, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through here, as I'm done with each one, I'm gonna come wipe these off and I'm gonna go ahead and mark them 
so I know where I started and stopped. So this one's adjusted, this one, that one, and that one. Okay, we're gonna set our injector on number five, which is this one right here. I'm gonna use a, a digital caliper. Um, 78.2 is what I want, so I'm gonna change this to metric. Make sure this is clean, zero up. What I'm gonna use is the depth mic side, which is this. And right down in there, see if I can point out so you can see it. There's a little hole right here that a pick would normally sit in. We're not gonna go in the hole, we're gonna sit on the lip like this. That one's set pretty close. So I'm gonna have to change it just a little bit. So I'll loosen this. I'm going to do, I'm going to watch my indicator, make it read 78.2, which is right there. I'm going to torque it down and that's set. That's all there is to that. There you can see it says 78.2. That's where we want to measure that. Same thing with that one. I need to come in and torque it just like I did the other ones. And then we check it. This one kind of amazing. Uh, I was talking to one of the guys in Salt Lake that ran the dyno room after they rebuilt engines. 78.2, yep. Pretty dang close, I'm not gonna worry about that. But they told me they moved that uh, screw on that six complete turns before it made a horsepower difference. Um, not that it's not important, that's not what I'm saying, um, but, but it's not a hundredth of a millimeter isn't going to make a difference. Okay, now I'm going to go to valve overlap on two. Now the intake lobe is loose. We're up on the exhaust lobe, so I'll just keep turning it. Till that comes up, starts just starts to come up on that lobe. Almost right there. Okay, now we're ready to set the next set of valves. And you can do this on pretty much any engine um, if you know how the firing order goes. A lot of them will have you set number one on top dead center and set half of the valves and then turn it over the crank one turn and the cam a half a revolution put number six on top dead center and you would set the other uh, the rest of the valves uh, but not this particular one okay i forgot to mark number five injector that we've already set so i'll mark that one and we're going to go ahead and check our valves on number five cylinder. Now it's tight. That's pretty tight. So we're going to have to adjust those. Let's see what these look like. Pretty tight. It's pretty tight. So we're going to have to adjust all four of them. So we'll go ahead and loosen them all up. I like to do the exhaust valves first because the fuel gauge is a little thicker. Uh, less likely to bend it, I guess, is the easiest way to say that. So, I'm going to come over here with my 20 thousandths feeler gauge. Come in here like this. We're just going to go ahead and torque this one down. Like we did the other one. 
Now that feels the same as the one I did on the other side. It's a little on the snug side. I could screw around with it if I wanted to, but for what we're doing here today, you can't feel it. So it's hard to explain it to you. So maybe on this one, I'll try holding it while I torque it and see if that makes a difference. feels much better so I think they feel the same part of it is how you're pulling on it if I put this in here like so you see it better here and I pull here it's gonna feel too tight I have to grab down here make sure I'm pulling on it straight same thing over here now that feels even okay so we're gonna go to our intake valves A lot of these you don't have to do this because the uh, there's just one adjuster per cylinder because they typically have a valve bridge. This one doesn't use one of those though, so they don't have it. Okay, that feels good. Go in here and just touches. Like I said, make sure my torque wrench is at 90 degrees to my crow's foot torque adapter. This is a line wrench crow's foot's what they call this one. A crow's foot's just an open end wrench that goes on like this. Now, the reason I use a torque wrench, and I always use a torque wrench on these, because usually what happens is they get way over torqued and then you have fights like this when you go to adjust them because the stud's been stretched so, so much. I'm taking exhaust, so we're gonna mark those. 